Mark's Gospel opens in the wilderness with people being invited there to repent and be baptized. Jesus' ministry starts in the wilderness as he spends 40 days tempted and tested by Satan. The account echoes the 40 years Israel spent in the wilderness learning to trust God in the Exodus narrative. The word that Mark uses here, aremas in Greek, is the same word the Greek version of the Old Testament uses for the original Hebrew, midvar. It is the wilderness, the desolate place, the desert. In the Exodus story, this is the classic thematic location of transformation. Mark intends to shed light on Jesus' spiritual practices. The connotation of his use of aremas not only rings of Exodus imagery, but of solitude. Let's get a look into a day in the life of Jesus, as Peter recalls through the pen of Mark. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Jesus rhythmically withdrew to solitary places. Mark is trying to shed light on that here. Luke, another gospel writer, is a bit more explicit. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Why did Jesus withdraw? Solitude is a spiritual practice, a way of spending time with God. Jesus invites his disciples into solitude as well. Let's read another scene from Jesus' ministry tales. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Richard Foster writes, In our day, God is using the spiritual discipline of solitude as the great liberator. Solitude liberates us from all the inane chatter that is so characteristic of modern life. It liberates us from the ever-present demands that are put upon us, demands that in the moment feel so urgent and pressing, but that in reality have no lasting significance. In solitude, the useless trivialities of life begin to drop away. We are set free from the many false selves that we have built up in order to cope with the expectations others place upon us and we place upon ourselves. Solitude empowers us to walk away from all human pretense and manipulation. In times of solitude, we become enveloped in God's very presence. You see, solitude is not simply being alone. It's a prayerful retreat of silence, attempting to draw near the heart of God. And when we spend time with God, our hearts become like His. Just after Jesus' retreat, this scene unfolds. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Do you see this pattern? Withdraw from others and draw near to others. Jesus models this for his disciples. Before he invited them on retreat, they had been sent out on mission, carrying with them Jesus' authority. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Withdraw from others draw near to others. Jerome Daly writes, We are meant for a rhythm of engagement and withdrawal. Thomas Merton writes, It is in deep solitude that I find the gentleness with which I can truly love others. So here we see part of our Exodus narrative is in the wilderness. The invitation into the austere silence of solitude. And there in the desert, we will encounter God. And in the thought world of the ancient Near East, in the time of the OG Exodus, gods were thought to be where people were, in the cities and civilizations, in the noise and busyness. And yet God drew his people out where no one thought they would find him, into the wilderness, into the silence, into the solitude. Would you come with Jesus to a solitary place to be with God?